Well, good morning. Uh, I'm David O'Hara. I'm one of the elders uh, here at Faith Community and have been for most of the last 20 years. And I, I only say that so that you'll know when I share some things about Jason that it comes from firsthand experience. So, uh, a little over 17 years ago, uh, Jason graduated from seminary, uh, and he and his wife, Lisa, and their kids started attending faith. Uh, we weren't looking for a pastor at the time, and he wasn't looking for a job. He said he just wanted to serve in the church. Now, you've never met a man in his 20s that was so humble and so mature. A few months later, we needed a youth pastor, and Jason said that he would love to help. So in October 2005, a man that we didn't seek out was provided to us by God to be our youth pastor. And not long after that, we needed a teaching pastor. And once again, Jason humbly stepped up to serve, filling the pulpit while the search committee went looking high and low for a good teaching pastor. And all the while, Jason was flourishing in the gifts God had given him. And the body was being nourished and knit together by the spirit through his teaching. So the search committee kept doing what search committees do. And after several months, someone said, why don't we just hire Jason? <laughs> Ever since then, Jason has faithfully, carefully, authentically taught us the word of God. And more than that, he showed us how to live it. For a lot of years, I have served with Jason at Faith, and I can absolutely say I love Jesus more because of him. So skip ahead a decade, uh, faith really began to grow. Uh, and as I've always said, praise God for this. This is a church where Jesus is worshiped, his word is taught, and people care for one another. Praise God for the growth of a church that honors him. But a larger church also means that leaders can't know everyone, and decisions can't be made with a quick conversation between a couple people. We need processes and procedures. We need job descriptions, structure in ministry and bosses. We need philosophy and ministry statements that give us guardrails on what we believe. Job descriptions became narrower and more specialized. And in most organizations, it takes a very different set of leadership gifts, skills, and desires to thrive in a small church than it does in a larger, more established one. So a few years ago, when the need arose for more pastoral staff, we knew that we needed a leader of the leaders. We needed an experienced pastor who could mentor the newer ones, and we asked Jason to fill that role. Looking back, that's about the time when the joy of ministry started to seep out of Jason. He's still that same gifted, humble man, but over the last three years, the manager role was taking a toll on him and having an impact on his ministry. Throughout the last few years, there have been lots of conversations between Jason and the pastors, Jason and other elders, between Jason and Lisa and other couples. All of us were trying to identify the core issues and come up with a solution. But one of the core issues is that Jason wasn't finding joy and fulfillment in the role of lead pastor. So the one thing that I hoped would never happen that the pastor I have deeply loved and admired for over 17 years would reach the point where he decided he needed to resign actually did happen last week. After a lot of conversations and tears, the elders are all in agreement that this is best for Jason and Lisa and that God is leading them in their decision. So 10 days ago, Jason officially resigned as lead pastor at Faith Community. The elders met with him and Lisa this past Monday and accepted their resignation. Now, if you've known Jason and Lisa uh, for a while, you've probably noticed some changes in the last few years. I've heard comments from some of you along the lines of, Jason doesn't seem himself anymore. Jason just looks tired. Jason, Lisa, and the elders put a lot of time into discovering solutions, but I think we were trying to solve an unsolvable problem. God has other plans for them right now, and we don't yet know what those are. 
What we do know is that the church is built on God and not people. People change, and change is inevitable, but God never changes, and he will never disappoint us. We also know that Jason and Lisa love this church and have no plans to leave. The elders and the Wolins agreed that Jason would continue to preach through the end of the book of James, which is right up to Easter. They are also committed to helping with the transition, and we're grateful to them. I don't expect this to be an easy time, although uh, a lot of me is hoping that it's like 17 years ago when God just brings a man through the door with humility and giftedness who says, I'm just here to serve. Uh, well, let me wrap this up with a few reminders. This is God's church, not Jason's or anyone else's. We will continue to worship Jesus, teach his word, and care for one another for as long as God enables us. We have a deep affection for Jason and Lisa and cannot thank them enough for 17 amazing years. Not many pastors and wives have that kind of endurance. I also want to say thank you to Trent and Lauren, to Ryan and Megan, to Josiah and Hannah, who have took on a lot of extra responsibilities recently and given massive amounts of time and have walked closely with Jason and Lisa. The elders have asked the pastors to say no a little bit more often than they normally do. We've asked them to clear their calendars of even some important things so that they have time to watch over their own souls and their families. One last comment. If you get the chance to talk to Jason and Lisa, let them know you will pray for them, that you're thankful for them, and specifically how their ministry impacted your life. Even better, write them a note so that they have something tangible that they can go back and reread. Don't let them know how disappointed you are or try to talk them into staying. If you have some harder questions, please feel free to ask any of the elders. Um, also, we intend to have a gathering closer to Easter where we can celebrate their ministry. Um, and right now, I'd like to ask Jason to come up and, and share his heart with you also. Man, well, thank you, David, for, um, for sharing that uh, hard news. I know that it's not a fun job, and thank you for doing it. Um, if you're sitting out there and listening Sunday after Sunday, you might just be thinking, whoa, like, I didn't, I didn't expect that. Like, where, where did that come from? And it's understandable because, uh, because Sunday morning's not the problem. Like, I love Sunday morning. Sunday morning's awesome. It's Sunday morning is like the thing that I look forward to every week. It's my favorite day of the week. Um, uh, I love preaching. I love studying God's word. I feel like I get these special moments where, where God just shows me things, and I'm like, man, God is awesome, and I want to just, I can't wait to share that with everybody. So that part of, uh, has just been a total privilege and amazing. So, but here's the thing. There's a lot that goes along with being an elder, and in particular being uh, a lead elder that has nothing to do with Sunday morning. In fact, most of my job has nothing to do with Sunday morning, and it's all that stuff that I've been struggling with over the past several years. Um, I just honestly struggle to be in that main leadership position at FCBC, at a church of this size, honestly. When, I, when we first started, our church was um, much smaller, less than 100 people. Uh, we, our sanctuary had 70 seats in it. Um, and, you know, I was in charge of like, making and printing bulletins. I mean, that's just the kind, you know, the, the type of things that has changed over the years. So the skills necessary to lead a church of 100 and the skills necessary to lead a church of 1,200 are totally different. And although I have loved to see the church grow, I've loved seeing people come to Christ, um, I've loved the, the pastor hires and all these other wonderful things, it's just been very difficult on me personally. Uh, and while I, you know, I just see there's a need for a pastor with a different set of skills and gifts than I have. And I have the ability to do the job in a passable sort of way, but I have honestly seen the effects of my lack of desire to do certain aspects of this job uh, affect the staff, affect the other pastors, affect the elders, and, um, and it's affected me. Honestly, my joy, uh, I feel kind of caged in a way that I, I just have been hard to explain. So I've been self-assessing for quite some time, 
And one of the main reasons it's been such an agonizing decision is I know, I absolutely know how disruptive this is for everybody. I know. Um, it's, it just breaks my heart to think of the feelings that are probably circulating around in the room right now, you know, feelings of, of betrayal or feelings of, you know, disappointment or abandonment or something like that. I mean, the last thing I want to do is cause someone to question their leadership or maybe question their faith, even worse. It just makes me sick, and I just want to say that I'm honestly just sorry about that. I'm sorry for the way in which this transition just affects our body. I don't want that, but we're all, like, just connected, aren't we? We just can't disconnect from each other, and that's the way it's supposed to be. So, um, you know, I wondered if this was something I was able to change. You know, could, could I maybe just work harder in some way or maybe just, um, you know, uh, just try in different ways, rearrange things in different ways? And, uh, and over time, God has helped me to see that, you know, maybe my strengths are better used in a different role. It's okay to think of this in terms of just a changing of the seasons. It's okay to think of that fact that, you know, the God, the work that God set out for us to do in this church is just kind of, you know, coming to a close. It's been completed, and I can pass the baton with joy now, knowing that you know, I look forward to the next leg of the race. So the freedom of that thought, uh, that transition, is kind of this mixed bag for me personally of like relief and just incredible sadness. Like I love all you guys, I love you guys. And it's just hard. Um, uh, but I really do think that transitions like this can be healthy, they really can. I know you can't absorb all this in like 15 minutes over the course of the next weeks and months. I hope to just keep on talking about it, just keep on sharing with you, what the elders' plans are, and, and work through these uh, uh, thoughts together. It's my absolute resolve, as David said, to just be, to see this transition through in a completely healthy way. Uh, there's, there's just, that's just my desire. I'm just totally available for that and, and love all of our elders. Um, so in terms of what's next for me right now, I, I don't know. So that's, that's a little uncertain for us, but that's less important at the moment. There, there are just three things that I can say right now that are important. Number one, trust God. He cares about this church way more than any of us do. Uh, number two, if you trust God, then you ought to pray for your elders. Um, pray for your elders. God will lead them as you pray for them. This just makes a whole bunch more work for already overworked elders, so um, pray for them. These are men of God who love us, they have taken care of us. They have taken care of you. Um, these are men who, who truly, truly love the Lord and love you, and so support them in whatever creative ways you can think of. That's very important. And then number three is do your part. You know, the, the body only functions well when we function together. We're all using our gifts, and so this will create new opportunities for you to use your gifts in, in different ways, and so please jump in and do that. We only work well together as a body. So... Use your gifts to build up the body and edify one another. So with that, um, the elders wanted to pray for the whole church. I'm going to invite them up to pray and just um, and pray for, for this transition and the implications uh, on our body. So invite them up for that. Lord, Man, times like this, with such a mix of emotions, I just need to lift my eyes to you, and, uh, and whenever I do, I'm just so glad you are who you are. You are so good all, all the time, and you are so faithful. You are the rock, our sure foundation. When everything else seems uncertain and unsettled, you are not. Uh, you're not surprised by any of this, even though we can feel that way. Um, you, you know what is to come. And so I pray that you would help us just to rest in that, to continually lift our eyes to you. Um, would you give us peace? You're the prince of peace. And you give peace that surpasses all understanding, which is what we need. We, we need that. And so I ask for that for all of us, that you would give us peace in the midst of this. Um, which, uh, as Jason just shared, and, and David, this is, is very hard, but really good, too, because you're, you're in it. Um, and so I pray that you'd help us to see that 
and just to trust you moment by moment um, and to, to do it together, that we would do this together, process together, pray for each other. Um, would you prompt us to pray even as we leave here throughout the week, throughout the coming months, Lord? We, we ask that you would draw us closer and closer to you through this so that you would be glorified even more. Father, we come before you and we praise you and thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, your word tells us that uh, he would not spare his own son. How, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And God, Jason has been part of those all things, gifts of your grace that are purely undeserved. And we praise you and thank you for Jason and Lisa. We rejoice over your work in saving them and in gifting them for service in this body. And we thank you for every ounce of effort that they poured into this body to the glory of God. And Lord, we would be so bold as to stand beside them with a confidence in knowing that you who began a good work in this church, in Jason and Lisa, in each one of us, that you'll be faithful to fulfill the work that you started in us at the day of Christ, that we will stand before your throne on that day rejoicing with our tears wiped away completely at all of our losses, and we'll see every single moment that we've had together as gain. Lord, the, the, this moment of loss in the span of eternity is gain. God, help us to see it like that as a church. And Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for being a good shepherd. Please, Lord, please help us to trust you. Help us to focus on you. Help us to bring our, our fears to you because you are steadfast. We're just a vapor. We're, <laughs> we're a mist that appears for a little while and then is gone. You are the one who matters. And we are so thankful that you have been kind and merciful to us. Thank you for Jason and Lisa. Thank you for their ministry here for so many years. Please, Lord, sustain them and encourage them through this transition. Help them to continue to serve you well, whatever you have for them. Lord, help us all to remember that you are the one who satisfies. You are the God eternal, and we are your sheep who want to worship you in everything we do. Lord, please help us make your name great, and we look forward to what you will do, and we count on you to establish the steps before us. Amen. Thank you guys. Um, just do me a favor and give me a smile right now. That'll help me 